the taxpayer is being overlooked in all this. There's a waste of money. There's over budgeting. We need more inspectors to actually be out in our neighborhoods, but inspecting these businesses to make sure that they don't have dangerous products next to your house. This is a great city. If people enjoy living here, the word will get out and we'll attract more people. That's better than tax incentives to corporations. 72 days out from the election and those in the crowded field for Houston mayor have begun pounding the local campaign trail looking to accumulate votes. At Friday's Super Neighborhood Forum, the growing sense of urgency to stand out was on full display. It's going to take someone outside the system to really make the tough decisions to be able to consolidate department, departments, to do things differently. We can turn our vacant downtown apartment buildings into housing and cluster business places so it generates revenue. We're going to have to have a mayor that can reach across the aisle work with those that control the purse strings for the state of Texas. Panel, as one of the moderators of that gathering, I can tell you folks are still pretty cordial with no one under fire except to some extent the current administration. All right, Seth, you've been watching this. Uh, what's your take on the mayoral race? <laughs> well, I think, um, you know, you have your two front runners that we all know who they are, but I stand there, you know, Gilbert Garcia is really starting to be the dark horse here, and he's starting to surface. He's starting to resonate with folks who are frustrated with the corruption, the dismissive and arrogant attitude of some of the folks in City Hall. So I think Gilbert Garcia has the money, the energy, and the fire in his belly to make this race exciting. So keep an eye on him. Marcus Davis, you know, <laughs> I've been working with you for a long time, and I genuinely believe you have the best interest of our city. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to see out of this campaign, and what are you not seeing? Oh, man. What do I want to see? I want to see a visionary lead leader emerge. One that is not talking about talking points, but is talking about tapping into the potential that Houston has. We always talk about being the fourth largest city. We're much further than that. We are an international city that has the opportunity to be on top of the stack and not somewhere in the middle. And we need leadership that, that can you know, bring that out of us. We need leadership that can organize what, what's happening in City Hall and that can get rid of some of the, the, the bad things, that sort through the debt. Uh, get us in a good fiscal position, but also talk about how we move in, in, into the future. So you say, what am I seeing? Uh, I'm hoping to see that. I'm hoping to see that. All right, Chow Wen, uh, you, you've covered races. You've yeah. also, uh, you're going to moderate a, a gathering tomorrow night. What would you like to see, and what are we not seeing yet from this field of candidates? Well, I have to lean on you for advice on how to, uh, to herd <laughs> six candidates at the Greater Houston Women's Chambers Go back luncheon. and watch the Republican debate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chambers then luncheon. you see how not to do that. <laughs> yeah. That'll be tomorrow. Thank you, Greg. And I, I will lean on you for advice on how to herd candidates together. But as the daughter of immigrants, my parents were immigrants, and they came here and opened up small businesses from hotels hotels to restaurants and you know of the gamut they were really concerned about their taxes they were concerned about public safety they were concerned about potholes driving you know to the city I mean we, we had a small pho shop in Chinatown and there was a lot of crime and as a child of immigrants as a child growing up in restaurants I saw firsthand what impact that would make on citizens of Houston so that's what I'm really hoping to hear right. and hoping to get some dynamism I am encouraged that there is one female candidate of the, the, the foray of male candidates, um, and hopefully we'll hear more in the coming months. All right, I, I got to go to Gary Pollan. What's going on here? Because linchpin in this will be whether the moderate Whitmire can uh, appear to a Republican voting bloc as the guy they can work with in a Democratic city who's got the, uh, you know, the connections in Austin to bury the hatchet. That's the, the, the Whitmire soundbite that we ran. What do you see happening in this race? Well, I think there's uh, at this point there's three candidates I think that could make the finals, and I think it's Garcia. I agree with Sergio. I think he's very capable, really bright guy, been very successful in business. Obviously, Whitmire and Sheila Jackson Lee, who's been run for office 8,000 times. The fundamental question in this race is this. If you're happy with the last eight years, the way the Houston's been run, which, by the way, we have run the city into the ground, then you ought to vote for Sheila Jackson Lee because she is a candidate of the current mayor. She's a candidate of Rodney Ellis. But if you think there we need change and new leadership, then you got to look to new people. I think Whitmire obviously strikes a court on crime. 
I mean, he's a crime fighter. People are concerned about crime. Infrastructure, it's falling apart. I mean, uh, uh, MJ Khan's idea, I, uh, bond, we need to go into more debt. No, we need to take the money we already have the, from, the, the, from that new tax we created for streets and flooding that someday will come back, uh, I know, uh, and, and spend the money the right way, but we're not doing it. So the city's falling apart. We are actually closer to a city that is dying than we are to a great international oh, city. Oh, no. Okay, uh, I, I got to go to Bob Price here. Bob has the, the experience of living in this city, but also having moved outside the city and watching it from a different perspective. So what's your take on this mayor's race? Well, I, I kind of agree with Gary that this city is in decline, and it has been for a long time. I'm not sure why any of these people would like to have this job. You, you've got a financial situation that's almost unsolvable. You've got an infrastructure problem uh, of great magnitude in this city between roads and flooding and uh, telecommunications. Everything is, is in disarray and hasn't been attended to. You've got crime that is out of control in this city. And, and with the exception of Whitmire, I don't think any of them have the experience to bring that piece of it under control. So it, it's really questionable why would you want to do this. I, I'm glad to see that there's so many people willing to throw their hat in the ring. But let's whittle this thing down pretty quick. It's a two-person race. All right.